Hey YouTube, it's Ratchetus. We're, uh, as you can guess by the title, we're doing a review for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. More specifically, Ultra Moon, because I only play in Ultra Moon and I get Sun. Uh, because you know, Hello Darkness, my old friend. You guys know my love for Lunala, alright? And Night, and Umbreon, Lunala, Midnight Form Life and Rock. I I'm all about the darkness and the moon and all that good jazz. Uh, so, we're just gonna do a quick little, you know, review, see how it goes, if it does well. Um, uh, maybe I'll do more Sun and Moon content, uh, in the future. Maybe I'll do some Smogon, or, uh, not Smogon, Showdown. Uh, so, we're gonna start off just, uh, we'll do, we'll do things I didn't like about the game. So, we start on a bad note, and on a good note. First thing I did not like is... Dust form lichen rock. Now, I actually do like dust form lichen rock. Don't don't put any comments about it. But uh, I did not like how you had to evolve it at 5 a.m. to 5:59 a.m. or p.m. depending on your game. Now, when I first got the game and I like power level to get lichen rock up to 25, and I couldn't get it to evolve until I finally learned, oh, it's got to be 5 a.m. So I actually set my alarm for like 5:30 or something to get up. And, in a um, moon, it's a.m., not p.m. Um, now, I know you could just, like, change the settings for that, but why am I going to change my system settings just to evolve one Pokemon? For me, it's just a little annoying, so that was just something I didn't like about it. Uh, the ice and flying sea crystals, just like in Sun and Moon, you're, they're just kind of there. Like, you don't have to get a battle for them, you don't have to do a challenge for them, you just walk up to a random podium and take it, which is kind of annoying. Like, I wish they had something, at least, like a battle. I think, mean, yeah, for the flying one, at least the golfer chick, I forget her name, um, shows up and gives you, you know, the little Z-move dance. But uh, for the ice one, there's nothing. You just get it. You don't even learn the dance, which is kind of dumb. Uh, so you kind of just... So when you do the Z-move, like, you don't actually have a dance for it, but it still shows the dance, which is weird. Um, next thing I did, I did not like, uh, the post-game, or not really post-game, but, uh, the Ultra Wormhole for Legendary Pokemon. Just annoying how it's basically a random chance to have it show up, and when you do, you don't know what Pokemon it's gonna be. It could be Entei, Raikou, Suicune, or no, uh, it could be Entei, it could be Kyogre, it could be Evil Tall. You don't really know. I know they're color coordinated, but still, it's like you could go into a blue portal and it could be any one of five legendaries. You don't know it. So, for me, when I want to get <coughs> proper natures, I had to bring like five different Pokemon with Synchronize and then Lunala. So, and even then, that wouldn't cover all of them, so I had to look out for specific ones. It was annoying. I ended up doing it, but it was it was annoying. Um, Post-game felt kind of small. I love the post-game. I love fighting Team Rainbow Rocket, but it just felt like that that was it. Now, I know there's the battle tree and all that, but that was we had that in Sun and Moon anyways. Um, I would have liked maybe something, you know, a little more. So that was it for just dislikes. Um, moving on to things I liked about it. Um, Story-wise, it was, you know, mostly the same. But it with a little, you know, add, adding on the Ultra Recon Squad. Um, I really liked how they added more to the Fairy Challenge. In the, in the regular Sun and Moon, you just battle the Fairy Chick, and then you got it. In this one, you had to go to all of the other captains. You actually had to battle them this time, which was nice. So I don't think we battled them in Sun and Moon. Or, or not during their challenges, at least. Um, so it was nice being able to battle all of them. Battle Kiwi, um, Lana. Uh, the only thing was, the last one, I think you fought the, yeah, you fought the Dark uh, Island Captain. No, I think it was the Kahuna. Yeah, anyway. You gotta fight him again, which was Okay, I guess, um, it's, that mean, and then after all that, you had to fight the Tona Pokemon, which, 
I had so much trouble with this. I don't know why I, my team had a lot of trouble with it. It was fun, though. Um, it was nice having a challenge. Uh, that's another thing. The game felt a lot harder than Sun and Moon. Maybe that was just my game, but like, I felt I was using Matt's Potion and Revives more often. Uh, I liked specific uh, the specific Z moves, you know. Lycanroc Z, Coma O Z. Um, I really liked the Lycanroc one because it had a different animation. Or not really animation, but like color setting, I guess you would call it, based on which Lycanroc was using it. So there was three different ones. What else? Uh, going on more with Di Dust Form Lycanroc, I liked how it's breedable. You can breed Dust Form Lycanroc to get a shiny one, a competitive one, perfect nature, uh, perfect IVs, and, you know, competitive battle, where with, like, last game the gift was Astro Ninja, you couldn't do that. Some water. What else? Um, post game, uh, I liked fighting all the gang bosses, especially Maxi and Archie, because if I'm remembering correctly, they're not the Oris Archie and Maxi, they're the ones from the original uh, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald days, which is nice, which is really cool. So it's it's really cool battling them. Um, the only thing was, I think it was hinted that Maxi came from Ruby and Archie came from Sapphire because they both won. Technically, when you fight all the gang members, uh, I didn't probably should mention there are spoilers. But I didn't say that earlier. Um, basically, they come from the worlds where they won. Where, as you can see, because they caught the legendaries of their games, which was like, when I fought them. Like, going against Archie, throws out Kyogre. Going against Maxi, throws out Groudon. Fighting Yveltal, or Xerneas, or Kirim. Actually, did I fight Kirim? I don't know if I fought Kirim or if I fought... I don't really... But anyway, you fought legendaries, which was just, like, not really done before. Other than, like, did you fight legendaries? I don't remember. Other than, like, in Battle Trees and Battle Tower and all that stuff. Um, um I just, yeah, I said earlier the game felt more difficult. Um, things I liked. The legendary Pokemon. So many legendary Pokemon. Like, oh my god. I think you basically get all of them within both games, which is nuts. You also can catch Zygarde outside of the game, um, in, uh, Resolution Cave, I think it's called, on Pony Island. Um, and then you go to the, um, the one lab where you would combine Zygarde, you run into Dexio, and other girl's name, I forget. But they give you a 10% Zygarde, and 40 cells. And just say, oh, go, go have fun. Um, so that, that was cool. It's just like, oh, 100% Zygarde. I already searched for the totem stickers, uh, on totem Pokemon. I've got to add that. Uh, Tapu Koko. I liked how in Sun and Moon you had to catch it in the post credit scene. I did not like that. I did not expect that. Um, so that was just, like, hard. Then it, because I had overpowering Pokemon and want to kill Tapu Koko. I liked how you just, you know, fight it just like the other Tapus this time. Um... Uh, Necrozma, Lunala, or Sodaleo, depending. You got, you don't actually have to catch them story-wise. You can wait until after you beat the Elite Four. Um, you know, at any point, to capture them, and that's really nice. Uh, because I can, uh, after, afterwards, I can, uh, eh. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I need more water. Uh, what was I saying? Right, I can go with synchronize and go for the right nature, go for competitive wise. I don't have to just catch it for story. Um, having totem Pokemon. Uh, I don't like it. They're, they're not breedable, which is a little annoying. But it's cool having, you know, throw Raticate and it's a giant Raticate or a giant Kamo. It's very intimidating. I like that. Um, 
again, you know, gathered the 100 totem stickers. I found them easier because they st stood out more than, you know, the little flashing Zygarde cells. In addition, Zygarde cells only would appear at day or night. So it was really easy to just go through and get them all, which was nice. Um, so that's about it. Uh, if I missed something, be sure to leave in the comments below. But final, my final thoughts. Um, I feel like Ultra Sun and Moon, they're meant to be the, the yellow, the crystal, the platinum, the emerald for Sun and Moon. It's meant to be, you know, the third game in the series. But Game Freak just decided, no, we'll make it two games, make more money, which I understand. Just people buy both games, didn't get them all. Um, marketing standpoint, it's a very smart idea. Game Freak, um, a little annoying. Realistically, they could have easily just made this a Pokemon Eclipse version. Because an Atrozum could have easily just, you know, absorbed the one and you catch the other. Because both are in the game. Um, the Ultra Reach ones. Eh, Ultra Recon Squad has the opposite legendary to the one you catch. And you can actually ride both of them in the Ultra Wormhole. So I don't really understand why they didn't just make it one game. Well, I do understand why I'm just annoyed by it. But overall, I'd say I, I enjoyed the game. It's a fun game. Um, but, but it's not meant to be ridiculously different. It's meant to be, you know, the third game. It's meant to be the third game of them. They just decided to make it for, for money-wise, because it's a company and that's what they do. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like, um, comment if you would with my stuff. Maybe there's stuff I missed, be sure to let me know. And I will catch you guys next time. Roxas, out.